Hi, I'm Jay, K6RUV. Well, about two weeks ago, I ordered an MFJ1026. I think that's the number. It's their noise eliminator. And um, in reading the documentation on it, it becomes obvious that you need a push-to-talk connection. That you, it, uh, when, when you transmit, you don't want all the power from your transmitting antenna uh, to be received by your little receiving antenna and blow out the circuitry in the MFJ. It's real similar to what we use in, the, in an SDR antenna switch. If you look right behind me here, you'll see a couple of uh, light lights on here. That, that's an SDR antenna switch. And that also has a push-to-talk input connection, um, as well as the amplifier. The amplifier has a push-to-talk input connection. So there's three things that I'm going to need to come on before the transmitter can come on. And there could be more. I mean, the, the industry is growing. There's lots of other stuff that we could be adding on in the future. I mean, just right now, I could think of that I wouldn't mind having an on the air light that comes on when I transmit, maybe right outside the ham shack door here. Or uh, I could recommend it to some friends that are a little bit long-winded for a light to come on after about three or four minutes so they know to, uh, to, to give it up and let someone else talk. Well, with that said, you know, we, we now know that we need more push-to-talk connections and may be available. Now, I use a foot switch. I always have. I don't like hand, I don't like hand, hand mics. I, I use a headphones with a boom mic and a foot switch, and it works for me. You may do something else. I, I don't know. But either way, you're going to need more connections. And yeah, there are connections you can tap into in the back, but um, it requires soldering some very small connectors, and you may or may not be good at it. I don't know. It may be easier for you, and using the connectors on the radio may work just fine, and that's, that's dandy. But here's another way of doing it. If we take a push-to-talk foot switch, or hand switch, I mean, whatever you want to use, and if we connect it to a relay bank, and if those relays were timed as well, that we could control when they go on, now we could have a pretty nifty little, uh, dis little distribution box there, couldn't we? So um, let's go over to the workbench, and um, I'll show you what I've come up with. And I'm just going to spin the camera around just to make it easier. We don't need to turn it off and start over again. So here's the workbench, and I guess I got it lined up okay. Here's the foot switch. It's a big foot foot switch. It's ones I sell. I've sold quite a few of them. They're really heavy duty and strong. Uh, they come complete with the plug and ready to plug into the back of your um, your radio, your amplifier, whatever you want to plug it into. All right, so let's plug it into the input here. There are five outputs here. And by the way, if you thought that you needed more than five, you could build another one and you can daisy chain them. So <laughs> there's something to think about. Now plug that in, and now we're going to apply some power to it. All right, turn the power on. We'll take the lid off so you can see what's going on inside the box. So here are the five relays, right? And when I push that push to talk button or foot switch, you're going to see them light, light up. They're going to appear to go boom, 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 but it's really going boom, and then these three, and then the final one. So basically the way I have it set up with uh, my shack is that I have the amplifier connected to the first one. That's the one I have set, the timer set, basically to zero. It comes on first, okay? Then the other three are all set about the same, the same slight delay. So just a little bit after this, then the transmitter come, uh, comes on last, okay? It's best not to have... Uh, uh, at, at, the, at the very least, it, come, it could come on at the same time as the amplifier, but certainly not before the amplifier. So I like it to come on just a little bit after, uh, so it gives the, ch the tubes a chance to be ready for, uh, for the audio. Okay, so let's give this a test, and you can see how it works. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. You see that last one? 
Yeah, it comes on last. So, so, so no matter how you want to set it up, whether they all come on at the same or whether you add a timer or whether you time one to come on as a, as a warning light to stop talking, at least you got the advantage to be able to have some adjustability and to be able to do that. So, um, these are pretty easily made. These relays are available from China for a reasonable cost. So was the case. I don't have a lot of money in this. And uh, uh, so I found it to be a cheap, fun, uh, fun project to do. Uh, these little rails that uh, these are setting on and into are nothing more than a uh, cutting board that I notched out so, so it would hold them steady and little screws are screwing it in. All right. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I don't do too many of them, uh, but maybe this will help you when it comes to trying to figure out how to get that uh, SDR unit to switch on and off or the MFJ unit to switch on and off at the right time. Or maybe you have other things that you want on and off. So uh, I certainly hope this helps. Well, thanks very much and 73.